Hi, I'm Renee Romeo. I'm here today to show you how to faux finish over existing wood in any type of furniture piece that you might have that you would like to change the color of. You don't necessarily have to sand it and restain in order to change the color. I can completely change the appearance of the wood as well by faux finishing it, getting rid of a lot of the grain um, in this oak piece. So if there's a piece of furniture you're looking at around your house and you want to change the look of it completely, uh, this might be a really good solution for you. So my list of materials are, uh, I need a paintbrush, I need an ordinary cellulose sponge. Um, that's going to be giving me uh, the nice graining, very, very fine graining uh, necessary to achieve a wood look on, over the top of this existing wood. Um, I need a Zinser primer. Now this is a primer that you use that you don't have to sand in order to get the paint to stick to it. So you need to get something like this. It's going to stick to any surface as a base coat for all of your project. Uh, if, you, if you don't use this, you're going to be really sorry and your paint will start peeling off. Um, so the, uh, the paint colors that I have, uh, I'm going to be doing a cherry color and believe it or not, you wind up uh, starting out with a color very similar to the background of this oak. Uh, so I've got an orange color, I have uh, a couple of browns, I've got a dark brown and I've got like a medium red brown and I can give the colors uh, on the website for you to follow if you'd like to do the exact same finish on your piece. Um, and then I have a, a can of polyurethane and a satin finish. Satin finish is always my preferred finish. Um, a lot of times you'll see uh, cans telling you that you can't paint over something um, with the, the oil-based polyurethane. And you really can. You, can. you can do that to seal it. You don't have to use the water-based sealer. Uh, I like the look of this a little bit better when you're doing a, a wood faux finish because over time it'll amber a little bit and, and give you uh, an even deeper look to that finish. Um, and so I do need to take the cabinet apart. So the cabinet that I, uh, that I have to take apart has several uh, different kind of screws on it. So I have a Phillips head screwdriver. Um, I've got a couple different sizes of uh, a regular flat head screwdriver because the backing for the mirror is actually stapled onto the back and I need to get up underneath those little staples my upholstery staple remover will not uh, fit back there. They're really, really tiny, so I need a couple different sizes of those. Um, and then I also need a pair of pliers because uh, the staples might get stuck and I might need to pull those out. So, uh, with that being said, I'm going to get started on taking all the glass pieces out, removing them. Um, and it's really, really important that if you have a piece of furniture with a mirror backing on it, that the mirror backing comes off. If you don't, take the mirror backing off and simply try to um, put tape around the edges. When your piece is finished, you'll be able to see a little bit of reflection back there and it'll kind of give away the whole effect. So it really does need to come off and uh, a little bit more work, but in the end it's going to be well worth it. So uh, let me get started. I'll start taking all this stuff off and then uh, meet you back up here and show you the next part of the project. So here are the clips. Um, normally these are called mirror clips and uh, the mirror clips are actually pretty easy to take out. They're just held in with Phillips head screws and I'm just going to remove them like so. Everything at this point has been dismantled. All the doors are off. Any mirror or glass pieces are off that can be pulled off are off. Um, that being said, on this larger cabinet, even though I purchased these at the same time from the same company, the cabinets are built a little bit differently. Uh, the glass panels here are stapled into place versus little mirror clips, so I've decided to go ahead and leave those in place and because I don't really have a proper tool to get in there and remove it safely. I, I'm going to use painter's tape all along the edges and anything that seeps through, little imperfections, I'll just scrape off with a razor blade. Um, and then this mirror backing is really the thing that I was most concerned with. Um, I, I don't have a tool for removing the staples easily either without uh, risking the mirror itself. So I've decided to leave it in place and I've gone out and I've purchased some uh, paper here for, uh, for painters. And it's a very thin piece of paper and what I'm doing, I'm not using the entire width of this because I'm going to be ripping it off and ripping it down the center to get small strips. 
And then I'll take the finished edge, this nice crisp finished edge, and I'm going to insert it in between the wood and the mirror. Now you will be able to see a reflection a little bit from that wood uh, through the back side of it. Uh, so what I need to do is try to insert this as far down as possible in between those two surfaces and tape it into place. Um, you know, honestly, in the whole scheme of things, you're, it's really not going to be a big deal uh, to have that reflection. Uh, it's going to be a dark finish on here, so I don't think it's going to be a, an issue for me. If, you're, if you were painting these uh, a white or a light color, then I would say risk the mirror and really try to remove it as best you can. Uh, but at this point, that's what I'm going to be doing, so I'll tape everything up and uh, get ready to go for primer. I'm also taking the opportunity to take some wood filler, uh, which is available in a tube like this, and to patch up these holes here for the door handles. And the reason why I'm doing this is because uh, nowadays they have larger door handles on cabinets of this nature, and I'm going to switch these out. And because I'm full finishing, I can go ahead and patch these up and drill anywhere in here uh, that I'd like without having you see the existing hole um, once I patch this, you'll never know that they were ever there before. I'll let that dry and then I'll just give it a light sanding. I've given this a light cleaning with a clean dry brush and basically just getting any dust off of here that might interfere with the quality of the finish of your paint. Uh, so I have the primer and basically what I'm going to do at this point is just take a, and brush on very lightly a coat of this primer. Uh, before I do that, a really good tip here is to take your fingernail and run it along the edge of your blue tape uh, just to make sure that that's nicely adhered before you actually put any paint up to it. So at this point, you're just going to want to get into every nook and cranny and then when you get to this inner edge where the tape is, you know, try to make sure that it's not a heavily loaded brush that you're working with. You kind of want to have this a thin coat when you reach the tape. And so if you, if you follow the line of the grain of the wood, in this case it's this way, you're just going to brush up and down and going with the grain of the wood all the way over the entire piece. I'm starting to brush on the base coat color for the cabinets and again in this case it's going to be a cherry mahogany dark brown so the base coat for that color is this kind of pumpkin-y color. Uh, when I brush it on it's basically the same method as brushing on your primer. Uh, it'll be a semi-thin coat, uh, it doesn't need to cover completely, you don't need a second coat for this for this pumpkin color uh, because if some of the white shows through uh, it'll be a little bit more realistic almost like real wood where you've got a lot of different tones going on in that real wood color so uh, it'll be just fine just go ahead put your coat base coat on and then we'll get faux finishing now that the base coat is completely dry i've let it dry overnight instead of the four hours that it says on the can because I'm going to be putting some pressure on top of this paint and I don't want to rub it off in the process of faux finishing. So I, I have my paint uh, and what I've done here, I told you that there are two different colors of brown that I'm going to be using. There's a medium brown and there's a darker brown. Um, they're pretty close in color, however, but uh, if you're wondering how to go about picking and choosing what color goes on top of what, um, the way that I view it is the very last coat is going to be your dominant color when you're done. So if you're wanting a lighter cherry, then save your lighter cherry for your last coat. If you're wanting like a darker mahogany color, then save your darker color for your last coat. So in my case, I'd like this to be a little bit darker. I'm using the medium color uh, as my very first color of brown that I'll apply. Uh, I've also gone ahead and I've watered this down. Now you could either do that with water or you could do it with glaze mixture. Um, so you'll see uh, it's pretty runny um, compared to regular paint. Uh, I, I would say um, it's probably a mixture of two-thirds paint, one-third water. Uh, that seems to be about appropriate. So you can play with whatever you 
feel most comfortable with doing. Um, so now that that's mixed, I'm simply going to pour this into a mini paint tray. And to complete this project, you really don't need much paint at all uh, to get the project done. So you don't need to purchase a gallon of paint, a quart of paint is just fine. Um, it'll take you all the way through. So once that's all poured into our paint tray. I have a, a little uh, bowl here full of water and a little rag. Um, this is going to clean up any extra uh, paint that I get spilled over onto a, a secondary piece of wood and you'll see what I mean uh, as I go along because you want to preserve your individual pieces just as they are like running with the grain so anytime you have a break in grain you're going to want to wipe that down so you can follow me along so here's my regular cellulose sponge I'm going to dip that in the water and make sure that that gets uh, nice and wet I want that nice and pliable so that way I can manipulate this faux glaze paint uh, or uh, watered down paint uh, to make very mini wood grain in this piece of furniture. Okay, so I'm, I'm set with this. I'm going to climb up on my ladder. I'll start in on the very top, and usually that's the way that I work. On a piece, I'll start at the top of the piece and move my way down. Uh, so all I'm doing here simply is taking a little bit of the paint and getting it onto the edge of my sponge, and you'll see uh, it's, it's not heavily loaded. It's just slightly loaded so you could see a nice coating of paint there. So I'll take this and I'll run it across. There's a little bit of graining going on there already and I'm going to go across and across. Now this doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing in nature is so if you miss or skip a little piece um, and you'll see you can go over this a couple of different times. I have a little bit of the orange showing through. And really, it's just as simple as that. So when I get to extra surfaces here, I'm just going to go ahead, wipe them in. And now you'll see what I mean. Here's a piece of wood going across, but I have these two longer pieces coming down. So what I want to do here is I want to take this rag get rid of that at the ends so that I can finish this piece of wood individually all along the same length. So hopefully you can get a good look at that uh, on camera and I'm just going to touch up this edge once again and that looks great. I'll give you a close-up. And there's the close-up on the piece that I just finished. You'll see I uh, because this piece is oak, I have a bit of the grain kind of uh, popping through that paint, so it will always look like real wood. Um, and the same thing should happen with your project as well. On occasion, you'll have to dip your sponge back in the water just to moisturize a little bit so that your paint flows a little bit better. So I've just done that. And I'm going to show you how to mate these two surfaces together. So you'll take your sponge, and you'll push it up square into that corner and then pull it down. And you can go over this a couple different times to even everything out. You'll see it's pretty forgiving. Um, and honestly, you don't need to get into every little nook and cranny here. Um, and you'll see I'm stopping. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to mate up with this at the bottom on there without overlapping and you'll see looks great. That entire process took about 20 minutes but don't be tempted to stop at this point. Uh, it looks really good but you really do need that third coat on there uh, in order to bring out um, that kind of multi-dimensional depth that real wood has. Uh, so you'll see uh, I'm going to move on to this piece and uh, let this dry overnight again. Uh, again, because we're, we're putting some pressure on this, you really want to make sure that this is nice and dry. 
Um, and just remember, as you go through this, uh, if you treat every single piece here, uh, wherever the grain it starts and stops, that's an individual piece of wood, you wipe away the excess on the sides and you will have a very successful look. The cabinets are looking pretty fabulous at this point, but there is still a second coat that needs to go with our brown, so I'm going to be doing this in the exact same process. Uh, I have my brown color in a little paint tray, I've got the same cellulose sponge, and so I'm just simply going to dip it into the paint, just enough to get a little bit of paint on the edge of the sponge, and then uh, go over this in exactly the same manner as before. So. Basically, if you're covering an area that's pretty large, you'll want to go ahead and do all of the outside edges first and then fill in the middle. So I'm going to be dragging it across exactly like you'd be filling something in and following the grain of the wood. So the grain of the wood runs in this direction. I'm going to be pulling it in toward the center so that I get a nice clean edge along the edge. Oops. And keep pulling it in until it's all nicely covered, but also that you can see through the wood tones to the other colors. Now here's a close up of the base of this. And so everything has been finished along the inner edges, um, but I just need this base to get done. So I'm going to do this very quickly. And you'll see I go around the edges first, get into all the nooks and crannies and the corners, and then take this, bring it into the middle, dip it again, and pull it into the middle. And this way, you get a nice clean edge along both sides and you get some graining in the middle that looks very realistic the way that normal wood grows. So there you have it. This is ready to be polyurethane as soon as it dries. The paint is completely dry on the entire surface. So at this point I could go ahead and take my polyurethane oil base in a satin finish and go over the top of it. Um, what you'll wind up doing is putting on a thin coat, letting that dry four hours, and then not sanding in between those two coats um, because you might have little pieces of cellulose sponge stuck in that paint. If you try to sand that, you'll go directly down to that primer sealer finish and you'll have little specks showing through in your finished product. So that's a lot of work to go through um, to wind up with something that's not quite right. So go ahead, it'll, the polyurethane will stick to the previous coat. Um, and after those two coats are dry, you can take off all your tape and paper, move it into position, uh, put your doors back on if you're working on a curio. Um, if you're not working on a curio, I, you know, some suggestions for this faux finish are interior doors of your home, the trim around your windows, uh, tables, chairs, um, anything. It's just endless. Uh, so uh, I'll go ahead and get this all cleaned up. Um, I'll even take a razor blade to the glass pieces in case I have some uh, little markings here and there. So, uh, and I'll show you what it winds up looking like. And it's really, really beautiful. You'd never know if this was an oak piece of furniture. Um, it, it looks really great. So uh, I'll show you what it looks like. Everything is finished. Everything is put back in place and what I've done here is I've taken a real cherry cabinet and put it in between two smaller cabinets and you can see other than a slight color difference it really is no difference in the look or appearance of the wood. It doesn't look like oak, it looks like cherry and no one would even know if it weren't for the case that you watched this video. So I hope there's something around your house that you can go ahead and attempt this faux finish technique and really change the look of your piece. Uh, until next time, this is Renee Romeo. Thank you so much for watching.